Hi guys, my name's Tom. Welcome to my studio. In this little episode, I wanted to talk to you about different types of edges. And although this is predominantly a watercolour channel with the odd little other thing chucked in, you will have seen in a previous series talking about the five principles of painting that edges was a big one. And when we haven't got kind of the distraction of colour and the distraction of the medium itself, charcoal I think is a great opportunity for me to talk about these variety of edges what to look for. I think charcoal is a fantastic medium to complement and run alongside the other painting mediums. It's obviously a beautiful medium in its own right and I consider these like finished works of art but as I said it can kind of run alongside the other mediums in a really nice way. I find it especially useful running alongside watercolour because it allows me to really think about tonal values and it allows me to really think about the edges. Where can I soften edges? Where can I lose edges? And that helps me inform my watercolour, like where am I going to work wet into wet, damp into damp? Where am I going to purposely aim for some slightly stronger, sharper edges? So I love charcoal. I love it alongside watercolour. For some of my larger watercolours, I often do a charcoal study for that exact reason. But what I want to talk about here is light and shadow and in particular the edges. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is form shadow versus cast shadow. So form shadow literally being if we have a 3D object and we are moving away from the light source around the form of the object into shadow, what sort of transition from light to shadow are we going to get? If we have a cube with very hard edges, we're going to get a very strong and hard transition, a sharp edge between one plane and another. If that cube starts to ever so slightly round on the corners, we're going to get a slightly more soft transition, but you may still see, be able to see kind of definite points of change in tone as you go around the form. But eventually as we move towards, say, a, a, a perfect sphere, we're not going to really be able to see a big transition from light to shadow. It's going to be very gentle. It's going to be a very soft transition, maybe even a lost transition. So we tend to think of things, or you can do, as hard, soft and lost. And this will hopefully make more sense as I explain. So those, those are our form shadows. We then obviously have cast shadows. So this is when an object is casting a shadow. The cast shadows generally tend to be a little bit sharper edged. It does depend on how far away the object that's casting the shadow is from the surface that the shadow is being cast on. But let's look at this in principle, it's going to make a lot more sense. So form shadows, this is a really easy one to understand. So here we have a 3D form of a wing. It's probably like a, you know, like a, a flattened 3D shape that kind of curves around the, the form of the bird. We have a very clear kind of light side here where the light is most hitting the plane that's most catching the light. Then as we go around the form, kind of back around the form and we kind of gently go round into shadow, we can't really tell exactly where light becomes shadow. So it's a kind of soft transition. If we treat this as one big shape, as we go around the form from the light area to the shadow area, if we ignore that for a moment, I'll talk about that in a sec. As we go from the light area around to the shadow area, going around the form, and apart from kind of the ups and downs of the feathers and things like that, overall it's a fairly soft, gentle transition from there to there. Here's slightly different, but that's because we have a plane change that's quite sharp. We've got some sort of feather or part of the wing that suddenly there's a swift plane change and we get a sharper edge between the lighter tone and the shadow tone. But equally here we've got a soft light area and it softly moves around the form into shadow. So that's generally our form shadows, unless there are very definite changes of plane, are going to be a little bit softer, i.e. we can't quite determine where light becomes shadow. This is a little bit sharper in its transitions from light to shadow, but it's still kind of there. If we imagine that as an egg shape, and this is clearly the light area of the egg, and this is clearly the shadow area of the egg, Although there's quite a sharp line between light and shadow, actually overall it happens quite gradually. We go from light to shadow in a fairly soft way. Here we go from light down to shadow in a fairly soft way. Um, those are kind of most of our kind of form areas. Equally here we've got kind of 
a transition from light into shadow that's quite soft but we'll talk about that a little bit more so those are our kind of form shadows and then if we say start to look for the cast shadows things become a little bit sharper edge so the obvious one here is that the beak is casting a shadow over the wing look how the line or the boundary of that shadow is quite sharp it's very hard um, equally here look how the head and the lower beak is casting a shadow over the top of the wing here and we end up with quite a sharp edge now as an artist we can um, decide to make some of those edges within the cast shadow a little bit softer just to create a variety of edge but it's something that I'm always looking for and here we get look how the head is casting a shadow over the beak so we have a gentle form shadow within the beak so we're moving from like a, a kind of a lighter area gently around into a shadow area or gently around the form of the beak into a shadow area but then laid over the top of that gentle soft form is a sharp hard cast shadow um, here's a very obvious one we have a very strong cast shadow here so very hard edge the feathers here are casting a shadow over the tail so again we've got a very sharp edged boundary on a cast shadow sharp edge boundary on a cast shadow the form shadows on the whole like I said unless there's a very definite plane change the form shadows are a little bit softer or even lost this is great in watercolor I tend to think of the first wash in watercolor as creating lots of the form gentle transitions from light to shadow wet into wet damp into damp gentle transitions over the top of that we start to paint the stronger form shadows so I will be talking about cast and form shadows and edges a lot more in actual watercolor tutorials but this is kind of the kicking off point so that's kind of form versus cast shadows I also wanted to talk about soft and hard when it comes to the the shadows versus the light areas so for example if we look in this area here which is very much cast in shadow everything generally is very soft edge we can't quite see when one slight sort of area of tone becomes another area of tone generally everything is very soft very fuzzy equally here where this is all in shadow it's very soft and very fuzzy down in here this is all kind of cast in shadow so there's lots of lost and soft edges then if we counteract that or contrast that with where the light is hitting where the light is hitting we're getting many more sharp edges um, much harder lines so kind of it's you don't have to stick to it as a dead set rule but one thing that works really well for me is kind of on the general rule kind of harder sharper light areas and softer more gentle lost and soft edges in the shadows on the whole we're looking for this because our shadows are lit by ambient or reflected light we know that that ambient or reflected light is or has bounced around and each time it bounces it loses power so by the time it illuminates the shadows it's much weaker than the direct light and therefore it illuminates the shadows slightly but the forms are less uh, defined and less obvious so again we've got the softer reflected light and the sharper direct light and you can play around with this it's not a direct rule like here is really um, like this is nicely lit here and it kind of you can sort of tell where light becomes shadow but not exactly so it's kind of a soft edge uh, whereas here we've got lots of lost edges here is much the same although a quite a different feeling of light in this one the principles are still the same like this whole area from here into here down into there all the way along there that is all shadow and although you can see some aspects of the different features of the bird there are a lot of lost and definitely a lot of soft edges like we can't quite tell where the beginning of the lower part of the beak is we can't quite tell exactly where the log becomes the bird we can't tell where the tail becomes the branch all of that sort of stuff it's all kind of lost uh, and soft edges in there and then if we contrast that with where the light is hitting we get these very very sharp hard edges and again I have lost some edges in the light just as I have defined edges in the shadows but the proportion of lost and soft edges in the shadows is much greater and the proportion of harder sharper more defined edges is much higher in the light areas like I keep saying you don't have to stick to these but they're a good place to start
The very final thing I wanted to talk about is the interaction with the background. So the interaction of the parrot with the background and the different types of edges we can look for. So the really obvious edge here is kind of dark against light or at least a shadow, a, a significantly shadow tone against a significantly lighter tone. So uh, an edge of high contrast where the object is darker than the background. So the obvious one is here. We've got this beautiful kind of dark shadow edge against a pretty light background there. We've got a nice dark shadow edge on the beak here against a lighter background there but then the beak kind of gets lost here, so we're playing with these lost and found edges quite a lot. The, a slightly shadowy edge of an object against a lighter background. We don't have that so much in this one. This is slightly different. These two have different types of edges that dominate. So the next one, if we've got a dark object against a lighter background, the obvious flip side to that is a lighter object against a darker background. There's not a huge amount of this here. Yes, these edges here, are ever so slightly lighter than the background, but there's not a huge amount of contrast there. We'll come back to that. Here though, we've got some very, very strong lights against some very deep shadows, uh, and that gives us some very hard lines. It gives us a very different feel to this one. So we've got shadow against light, light against shadow. The other two that that leaves then are light against light and shadow against shadow. Depending on how close together the tonal values of the background and the foreground are, um, that m kind of dictates what sort of edge we get. And then we also have the medium itself. So in charcoal, we can soften an edge physically. In watercolour, we create our soft edges by the timing of pigment and water in the brush versus how wet the page is. So let's look at kind of um, shadow against shadow. That's the next obvious one. So here I've got kind of shadow tones of the object meeting the shadow tone of the background and in places it's completely lost. In other places we can sort of tell where the edge is but it's very 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 soft and maybe even lost in a few places so that's kind of shadow against shadow, shadow against shadow. Equally as we were just talking about with the soft shadows we've kind of got shadow of the tail meeting shadow of the branch, shadow of the beak meeting the shadow of the background. Um, even over here we've got shadow of the tail meeting shadow of the background and even over here we've got little places where shadow meets shadow um, and that gives us a lovely soft gentle atmospheric feeling when we start to vary edges with our object and it's meeting with the background. Those are our three then and then the fi very final one which I just mentioned is light against light. This is one that I feel I don't do enough of and I'm always trying to do more of I've tried very hard to get it in a few places, almost as a bit of an afterthought. So we've got a light feather here and I've purposely lightened the background behind it so that we kind of lose an edge there. I've lightened the background behind the very light part of the head so that we lose an edge there. I don't really have a lot of light against light here. In fact, the only place I've really got a light against light, a lost edge, is in here. And again, it was almost a bit of an afterthought just so it didn't have quite such a a sort of stuck onto the background feeling. So to summarise, the crux of this is that I'm always looking for a variety of edge and this is what I try to encourage other people to do. There isn't necessarily a right or a wrong, but having this variety of edge firstly allows the eye of the viewer to be led around the painting. Our eyes will get led to areas of stronger contrast and sharper edges and then we kind of Opposing to that, we have very soft and completely lost edges, which create atmosphere, they create depth, they create more general areas that kind of sit back in a painting. And just to recap, we have the gentle form shadows. It's softness depending on the, the amount of change and angle between the different planes. On top of that, we then have our cast shadows, which are generally sharper and harder edged. On the whole, I'm looking for slightly sharper, harder areas in the light, lit by direct light. The shadows are lit by the ambient or reflected light, which is weaker, so they tend to be softer. And then very finally, just to recap, we have that interaction between our object and the background. We have shadow against light, shadow against light. We then also have um, light against shadow, so that's much more prevalent than this one. We have lots of light 
against a darker background. We then have shadow against shadow here, down here, and even over here. The, the depth of contrast between the two shadow areas dictates how lost or found that edge feels. And then very finally, we have light against light. Not really got a huge amount of it here, this tiny bit here. Um, I've tried to make a little bit more of it happen here, kind of here and there. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. I've said it before, but if you're new to this, it can feel like a lot to take in, but I really do feel just knowing that different types of edges exist and looking for them is a really fantastic place to start. Have fun with them, play around with them. If you found this useful, please do consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of all the new videos I've got coming out. You can join me over on Patreon for lots more tutorials, all sorts of other stuff, and all the links in the description to where else you can find me. Until next time, guys, happy living, happy painting, and I will catch you in the next episode.